and this is important, I wanted them to learn that it is not hopeless, that there are important things that we each of us can do to make a difference, but I wanted to make sure that they didn't feel that the whole thing was so hopeless that there was no use. When I first started the project three years ago, the class I had at that time were totally engaged and they held me accountable for what was going on in the classroom. What I found interesting about this program was that we could actually learn about climate change and the effects of it. Learning about how one thing can lead to another. And if we think locally, then we can act globally. So if we do the littlest thing in our community, It'll, it can be the biggest thing throughout the world. If something in the ocean such as, such as the phytoplankton die, um, then like, all the other animals that depend on that will die. I found really interesting when we made the pizza oven solar boxes. We made a solar oven out of pizza boxes and we like to toast marshmallows on biscuits and other chocolates. Well, what I found interesting was that um, how the people who least contribute to the problem are the worst affected. The student engagement was high throughout the whole unit, particularly because in the general media, climate change and sustainability has been, has been there the whole time throughout the three period. So the students were learning about what was happening in the wider community and gaining a greater understanding about politics and what was happening in their environment and why that was going to be a long-term issue for themselves. Well, energy doesn't come from coal all the time and that means that we don't produce as much carbon dioxide. The solar panel gets some um, which goes into the battery over there, then it goes into that. Well, the pump's pumping water up into the water wheel and then it's creating electricity to spin that while it's pumping back in, so it just keeps on rotating. I reckon it's important to um, learn about the, these energy devices, so maybe when we're older we could possibly, some of us could actually build some of these and maybe make them a bit better as well. Students are being bombarded from all sides about climate change and it can be a very scary thing when you're a child, so it's to give them hope and the ability to be able to do something from their perspective and because they can do it from their perspective that can snowball and go into the greater community because of the steps, small steps that they've taken. We had to design an energy efficient house. Uh, I've got a native garden for a carbon sink. The walls are double brick. In between each layer, the heat gets trapped. Being built into a hill also keeps some of the sun out. I've got double glazed windows here. My roof is black collarbone steel with Thermatec technology. I reckon that the best teaching strategy was all the hands-on, like planting trees, and we've removed a lot of big old camphor laurels, which really gets your mind into helping the environment. We're picking out seedlings of camphor laurels, and from this little um, seedling, it can turn into something as big as them trees over there. I do love the hands-on things. That's quite a good one, and also just like on the computer, looking up and exploring environmental sites and stuff like that. The best one for me was being in the group and having more ideas than just one. Well, obviously I wanted them to learn to have a certain knowledge about climate change, um, what it is, what's causing it, and what they can do about it. But more importantly, to change their lifestyle so that they are actually doing something to help towards climate change. So that they don't just learn things, but they actually go away and, and do things in their everyday life. Well, we can all work together so we can reduce our carbon emissions so that the world is healthier for us to live in. We did a few hands-on activities like planting trees around the school and then we sat down and talked about strategies that we can use to take place in school environments and at home of how we can cut down our emissions. We can also turn lights off when we leave the room. That's an obvious one, but a lot of people don't do it. We do gardens, we um, 
water the gardens. We go around the school turning off all the taps so that we make sure they're not running, so that we're not wasting any water. We look after a frog pond. We've made a worm farm. We can promote it around the school and we can teach other students about it as well. C, caring for the environment. I became involved because all of my friends were doing it and I just love the environment and I would like to do my part in helping the world become a better place for everyone. At home you can put a frog pond, a compost bin or even a water tank like we have at school or like at my house because I live in the country, we have a sewage tank. I'm working with a partner and putting together um, a PowerPoint because then you're still researching at the same time but then you're, you're the one who's doing it so that you take more interest in it. So this is our school vision, like what we would like to do and how we're going to do it, what we want. We want an environmentally responsible school. The level of... Um, really deep understanding of quite complex issues um, comes through in their presentation of the work that they do as well. So in terms of curriculum, at what point do kids learn certain things? I don't, I don't ever think that you can box that content knowledge and say this age group can't learn that. I think with the right direction and the right teaching and facilitation and opportunity, kids can pick up on all sorts of quite complex issues at their own level at any point in time. I would like to learn what other countries, their problems, what they're going through. Well, I would really like to learn a lot more on how all the different greenhouse gases are actually made. Like salt for hexafluoride, I've absolutely no idea how that is actually made. I'll probably like to learn exactly how much has been lost instead of just knowing that a lot has been lost, actually knowing how much. I'd like to learn more ways how to reduce the effect of climate change. I'd like to learn how, how they actually found out that climate change and global warming is happening. It also has now developed those relationships between the primary schools and high schools where they're not afraid to work together anymore and they're, they're happy to share information about their students and about programs that are happening. I found it interesting how much knowledge the primary school students did have to what I had when I was their age. They've learned a lot more and they're developing every day. We have much, much stronger links than we've ever had before with our primary schools. It's about learning opportunities in each of the schools and the students in each of them. This is an ongoing process and probably one of the most successful that I've seen. Um, as soon as you get to teachers working with teachers to write programs and develop resources, that's when the real learning happens. One thing that I believe really is so important to the future and the sustainable nature of environmental education in schools is that we really must support teachers with professional, really good professional learning opportunities. Actually seeing how Year 6 classes operate was, it was very, very valuable for me. So when they come to Year 7, they actually can get an understanding of how big a change it actually is for the students when they turn up here at a high school as opposed to the primary school setting. I also like the just the cooperation between the between the two different staffs and getting an understanding of how they teach compared to how we teach. We can see nothing but good coming out of it and we just continue on the same path all the time. You get practical applications, so really you're running a COGS unit, uh, you're running science and technology and you're getting practical benefits in your school all the time. We would like to see the project itself continue on just because the climate change project is finished this year we'd like to see climate change be a, a focus for future years with, at our school so I think that is a benefit. I'd like to learn more about what we can do for our environment um, what we can do to stop the um, to stop it going because even though we have all these great things I'd like to know more about what's actually being done at the moment like what international groups are happening and which people are studying what and why I'd like to know more about what we can do directly to impact the in, impact the environment and the atmospherical conditions. The changes within the school have already started where we have an environmental committee now and we have teachers and parents working on that committee. 
we um, have Go Green days now. We didn't have that before. So this project was the was the beginning of uh, of an environmental awareness of our school, and that will continue.